Hi guys, welcome to part 2 of your third Xcode programming tutorial, the UI object tutorial and we started by doing text fields and translating them into labels texts and I think I might have covered basically parting objects but not properly and I will use it in a lot of further tutorials but it's fairly basic and that's what we're doing in this tutorial we're looking at properties of UI objects and by properties I mean those things that come up in this section of Xcode, things like hiding the object programmatically, enabling and disabling the object, so um, so with a button that might be not ma making it not possible to click it, uh, highlighting objects, so when you click on a button you'll see it goes into this highlighted mode, or like when I click that next. So I'll show you how to do that programmatically. So we'll look at the various properties of UI objects and how to implement them and pass the data through them. So let's start. Um, create a single view application or any application. It, can, it doesn't matter because we're just looking at UI objects. I'm not using storyboards. You can. It, uh, no, it won't make a difference. And I'm just using iPhone, but that's up to you. And we'll call it UI object. To, you can call it anything that won't make a difference to the coding um, and that's probably not the best name for you because if you use you're probably using the skills you learn from this tutorial in your own project so you don't need to worry about creating the project I don't actually recommend you do because the coding is quite simple and it's all quite simple you probably don't need to follow on word for word you can do it in your own application and you'll be able to work it out pretty easily so I'm going to create an X, go into your XRB, go in to click on your view, I'm going to make it none. You can use the retina for full screen, but I find, I don't personally like the, um, the simulator. And I also find that I'm recording this tutorial at the start of 20, or um, mid 2013-ish. And obviously the iPhone 5 has only just been announced a few months ago. And so although a lot of people are using it, there's probably still more users combined using the 4S4 and 3GS. So I think it's better to still use this size screen and then use auto layout, which will be tutorial 8 or 9, um, to then go to the iPhone 5. In about two years' time, it would be better to create an iPhone 5 application, scale it down for the 4 rather than scaling up. But don't worry about that. Okay, I'm going to add in a button, and that button we're going to hard show, enable, disable. So this button is going to be called our object. And then we'll have another button, which will be hide, enable. If those lines appear, that, that's part of the auto layout and constraints. So ignore them until that tutorial, which will be 8 or 9, as I mentioned. And what other things might we want to do with our object? In fact, um, should we use buttons or do you want to use a segmented control? Let's use buttons and I'll show you in our segmented control tutorial. I'll base it off this project. And uh, we'll just hide and show the object. And here are the properties I was talking about. You can see the enabled, highlighted. So if it was disabled, it would it would look the same, but you just can't click on it. Um, hidden, well, it becomes hidden. It won't look like that on the simulator. You just won't be able to see it. That's just there so that when you are designing the app, user interface you can still see that there is an object there but we'll make it unhidden to begin with and you can change the background the backgrounds are actually the button background per se it's more that the edges because it's a curved button it's um your rounded rectangular button so it's got the rounded corners it just changes that back part so i, I actually hate doing that it looks really awful in my opinion so i wouldn't it doesn't make any difference though really so those are the two things we'll look at, um, and from there you'll be able to work out how to change everything else, all the other elements. Um, we went, we looked at in our previous tutorial in the part one of this, we looked at text fields and how to change text. So it's the same as setting a labels text on a button you would do, let's say we call the button button, we'd go button.text equals uh, text field.text. So I won't show you how to do that in that tu this tutorial. That will have been the last tutorial if you want to know how to do that. Okay, now we can open up our dual editor and we need to create one outlet and two actions. So add a curly bracket after you over your controller. 
And the outlet's going to be our object, obviously. And that'll be an outlet, a button, and the storage will be strong, and we're going to call it button. And then we need to create two actions, the hide action. Touch up inside ID sender. And the enable action. And then we need to go into our .m file. So go back to your single editor standard view or your hierarchy view on the side and go into your .m. So let's start with hide. Now what we wanted to do is when you click hide, it hides it. And then when you click it again, it shows it and then hides it and shows it. So you first got to detect, is it hidden? So we're going to do if button dot hidden equals equals yes. Then we want button dot hidden to equal no. Now let me explain these two equals because I haven't gone into proper detail uh, into that. Two equals means you're comparing it. So if, if this is this, then do this. One equal means you're saying this, do this, not if. There's no if. This is more of an if. This is comparing. This is t giving it an action. So in an if statement in this section, you're almost always going to do two equals because I'm not. I don't want to go button dot hidden equals yes. I want to check if button dot e uh, hidden equals yes. So that's why it's double equal. Same for if I want to check if button dot hidden and button two dot hidden. I wouldn't do one and. I do two ands, uh, or I do two ors, and that that's the symbol for or. So button dot hidden. All button one dot hidden. If one of them is hidden, you could do something like that. And that's the symbol for all. For and, it's two ampersands. For equals, it's just equal signs. And so, if button dot hidden is yes, then we want to make it not hidden. But else if, and it is else if because it's if if the first case isn't true. If it is hidden, uh, sorry, if it isn't hidden, well then we need to see what else could be the case. And the other case would be. It's not hidden. So else if button dot hidden equals equals no. Open curly brackets after that. Button dot hidden equals equal. Uh, sorry, just equals yes. Semicolon. And then that's all we really need to do. You could, if you want to, do an else, else, and then nothing, and or ns log. error and that will pretty much mean if if it's not hidden then it must be visible but if it's visible then it must be hidden but if it's neither of them then clearly there's an error so then we log error that shouldn't occur but that that's uh you might even want to come up with an alert a ui alert which is a later tutorial and uh, to say there's an error that's occurred up to you though you don't need that and then we want to do the same for enable so if button dot enabled equals yes then ah oh, see it's given me a, a warning slash error and i've gone through this in our i'll go through this in tutorial six it said you can put parentheses which you obviously don't want what we want is we need to turn this assignment into an equality comparison so and by that it means we want to turn it into a comparison what type of comparison whether it equals so an equality and that's what that error means so when you do get an error, they're going to use kind of technical language, but it's actually quite simple when you work through the error. So always do that. Then button dot enabled equals no. And it's like missing a semicolon if you only did one equals. It's an obvious, simple error. You, you'll get a fairly good error description and you'll be able to fix it pretty quickly. So don't be concerned. Button dot enabled equals no. Then we want the button dot enabled to equal yes. And then again, we will do an else statement and make sure that was an else if not an else because otherwise it's going to go if bundle on enabled equals yes. So if it equals no, um, then what it's going to do is, okay, well, it doesn't, so we'll go on to the next one. But then here, if inside here you had code like int plus plus, int i plus plus or something, and then you checked in this one, does int i equal th uh, two because it's plus plus here, it's going to then go yes. So you always need to use an else if as the second part of an if statement. If you've got two completely different if statements, then you use if and if. But if, if they're part of the same the same function, 
then you're going to need to use uh, if, then else, if, then else, if, then else, if, and then um, else for an error. And we'll just do error in enable. Okay, um, we can run that now and we'll see if it works. Ah, let me just quit the simulator. And what should now happen is we should be able to, um, when we run it, we should be able to enable the button, then disable it, and then enable it again, and then hide it, and so on. So we've got our object. If I click on it, nothing happens. We didn't link it up to an action. I can enable it. So now that's disabled. And what we could do, and I'll show you this in a moment, we could link this up to an outlet and then go in this text here where button.enabled equals uh, no. Well, if it's not enabled, then it's going to be disabled. So then we should change the button.txt equals disabled. And that's the code you would use. You'd link up an outlet to that button, which we won't do. And then you could change the text. Because obviously, when it's disabled, like now, you want to enable it. But when it's enabled, you want to disable it, not enable it. But that, that's more a user interface thing. And that's obviously fairly easy to change. You're just changing the text of the button, which is button.txt. So that's enabling, disabling. So let's enable again. And hide, show, hide, show, hide, show. And when it's hidden, obviously, you, you can't see anything. It doesn't work either. So that's your tutorial on hiding objects. And it's the same for anything. If I had here a switch, I could put a switch in, link that up to an outlet, and call it switch. And then here I could do... I could change it from button dot hidden to switch. I shouldn't have called it switch because switch is actually a function. So we'll call it switch to. And we're just going to copy that, paste that there. Paste it there, paste it wherever you see button pretty much. And if I now run that once I've done all of that, I'll just change the name in the dot h file as well. And then I'll have to relink it up. So there, there's a few words such as switch, such as if such as any number, such as int, that you just can't call an outlet or an action or anything, any variable, because Xcode's going to mistake that for being an actual function when it's not. And you've got to be careful about that. And so we'll link up switch to. And then if we run that now, what we should be able to see is it's going to hide and show the uh, switch instead. And again... If I enable and disable the switch, when it's disabled, it actually fades a bit with the switch. And that really just depends on what object you're using. That's nothing to do with the code. And you, because this, it's a standard button here, you can't change that. What you can do, on the other hand, if you had a custom button with a custom image, you could go uh, like in wherever the right code section would be. So in hidden equals no, you want to hide it. Oh, in enabled, sorry, you'd probably do it. When it's not enabled, and you want to, when you want to disable it, you might do button dot background. Uh, oh, we could do background color equals um, UI color square brackets red color. And if I run that now, every time I disable the switch, it's going to change the background color of our object. So when the switch is enabled, it's going to make the background red. And you could do something like that for a custom button to indicate that it is enabled or disabled. You can also change the colour of the text and to look at what it would be, for example, so if here I want button dot text colour and I don't know what text colour is called, I can try typing text, well it's not that. So I can go through and have a look at all of this but and find what, what seems like it would be the right um, the, the right uh, well, the right action, I guess. And then if I want to find out more about it, like what is tracking, I can click more and it's going to bring up all the Apple documentation about that particular thing. And I'll get a bit of information from that. But the best way to do it is it's going to be button dot. And let me just say one more thing. Because Objective C is based on C sharp C plus plus C, uh, you can button dot enabled is the same as square brackets button enabled. And I first started coding with C-sharp, and so that's why I'm used to doing just dot, like button, dot enabled. 
But if, if you have previously programmed with C++, you might be more used to using square brackets. Uh, that's up to you. But let me go back to topic, which is if, the best way to find out what something's called is to click on the object and find out what it's called down the left-hand side of the right-hand side view, the attributes view in um, under attributes in Spectre. So, for example, text color is going to be called text color. And if there's a space, it's going to be camel case, and then it'll start with lowercase, and then there'll be a capital C and no spaces. Um, so I, I prefer change the background, and it was a color. So once I start typing background, I might get two options. I might get background color, and I might get background, just background. Obviously, they don't, or background image. Obviously, they don't match the exact text there, but it's going to give you a pretty good idea of what to start searching. So that's um, hiding and showing and enabling objects for you. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Next tutorial will be part three of this tutorial, actually, and that will be segmented controls. So look forward to that. If you've got any questions, feel free to comment on the video or visit the 99centsappdevelopment.com website and go to the Get In Touch page. The link will be in the description, as always. And be sure to subscribe and like to check out more videos. We're, this is part the second tutorial in our tutorial bonanza. We're going to have one week, we're going to release 10 tutorials, and we're going to do that once a month. So in one week's time, you're going to have 10 tutorials to look through, to research, to try and understand. And then what I suggest you do do during these tutorials is take notes on the ones that are important to you and ones you think you might come back to later. Because something like hiding objects, you are going to use, I can guarantee it. In at least one of your apps, you will use hiding objects. So it's useful to just write down outlet.hidden equals yes or no and then you'll remember. What I do is I've got one project, one um, yeah, one, one project really and it's got every interesting tutorial that I found or any in textbooks or on, on the internet I create a new view in that project. I might not even, I might say I might in the past two tutorials I might have created a view that looks like this and that would have all the code for enabling and showing and setting the text of a label all in that one view. So I then can go to the .m file, I'd put a comment saying this is what to do dot dot dot. And I'd be easily able to refer back to it. And I'll just carry that on a USB everywhere I go. So that's a good way to use these tutorials, to utilize them in the best possible way. So you're always, and it's a good way of helping you to remember. If you just watch these, I can guarantee you won't memorize any of it. And it's not vital to memorize it, but it's good to have memorized something like dot .hidden because that's fairly basic and you should be able to memorize that in less than three seconds. And it helps a lot if you actually type it out. So it takes 10 or 15 minutes, so 10 or 15 minute tutorial. You might have to pause the tutorial occasionally, but it will make a big difference to your programming skills. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Next tutorial, as I've mentioned, we're doing segmented controls, which is interesting and it's quite useful to use. In this tutorial, for example, it would have been better to use a uh, segmented control than buttons for the hide and enable. I didn't because I haven't showed you how to do that yet. But the next tutorial, I will base it on this tutorial. So if you watch this tutorial, don't delete the project if you've been following along that you've created. We're going to use that in our next tutorial. Thank you and goodbye.